good morning and welcome to Radio Vineyard on YouTube. This is our Sunday morning service that we're beaming out to you from our YouTube channel. And I've just put up here a list of some of the things that we are doing with regard to church this week. Obviously, all these things are online, so we don't actually meet in at all uh, with anybody due to the um, government restrictions. We have youth today at four o'clock, quiz night tonight at eight o'clock, book club is next Sunday. Uh, Lego is on Lego Club is on Facebook tomorrow at three o'clock. Uh, staff meeting tomorrow morning and men's Zoom call tomorrow night. Vineyard Voyage continues on Tuesday, which is one of our small groups, and we have three or four other small groups throughout the week. All details on our website. If you want to log on to any of those, give us a call or text us or WhatsApp us or email us, and we will give you some details for that. Uh, all images today courtesy of Stand Up For Nature, Beachfront, Fidevo and Migros Images. Many thanks to them for providing their um, lovely creative work today. Now we're going to go over to Dave Gillette who's going to lead worship for us from his upstairs room. Uh, and just another pray just as we do that. Lord Jesus, we ask you to hold us close now Lord as we worship you Lord, as we come before you. Now we want to enjoy you, Lord. We want to praise you. We want to be embraced by you. We want to be close to you. We want to feel your presence, Lord, and experience everything you have for us today, Lord. We thank you for Dave who's prepared this in advance for us to really worship you, Lord. And we thank you now, Lord Jesus, with everything we have as we worship you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and astounding God's love so confounded appears to us the cleansing flow so left throne and glory the Father's wrath and fury
talking about thriving in adversity and in particular about uh, the book of 1 Peter. Peter was one of the disciples uh, when Jesus walked the earth uh, and uh, when the Holy Spirit came after Pentecost Peter was uh, largely regarded as the leader of the disciples and became the first pope and this is the book what well, the first book that he wrote to the churches in general around the Jerusalem area and across uh, Europe and Asia and across the Roman Empire. And he says this, he says, be agreeable, be sympathetic, be loving, be compassionate, be humble. That goes for all of you, no exceptions, no retaliation, no sharp tongue sarcasm. Instead, bless, that's your job to bless. You'll be a blessing and also get the blessing. Whoever wants to embrace life and see that the day filled up with good, here's what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful, snub evil and cultivate good. Run after peace for all your worth. God looks on all this with approval, listening and responding well to what he's asked. But he turns his back and on, on those who do evil things. So we're talking about thriving in adversity. We are talking about um, just looking for hope in our lives, looking for hope um in the the way we go about life the way we do things in god uh and looking for hope in a situation when lockdown is you know it's a serious situation at the moment there's lots of things going on extraordinary times but we have an extraordinary god uh, and we're looking today at living a life that blesses others it's apparently human beings can live uh for live without um food for 40 days hence jesus in the desert uh, when he was in the wilderness, he lived without food for 40 days. Uh, humans can live with, for, without water for four days, four days only. So it reduces by to, down to a tenth. They can only live for four minutes, uh, if that, without air. But for, with, that, with regards to hope, we cannot live for more than four seconds without hope. If we have no hope, then there's no point in going on, is there? We as humans seek after hope like moths seek after light. It's intrinsic to who we are. We absolutely must have a reason to live. Otherwise, there is no reason to live. You know, it's, it's a fait accompli. Now, science, particularly neurology, which is a study of the brain, tells us that hope is so essential to our survival that it is hardwired to our brains. We have to have hope for our brains to work. It can be the difference between living a healthy life 
or a life that's trapped in despair. It can be one or the other. So hope is essential. Now we're living in a time when we're redefining what essential is, aren't we, you know, in our lives, in our maybe kind of slightly narrow lives. But so, so for us, the NHS is essential, particularly if you've caught COVID or if you're struggling through the lockdown with something that isn't COVID, you'd want the NHS there to help you. So the NHS is essential. PPE is essential, the protective um, uh, coverings and everything that, that people wear, like the face masks and stuff and uh, hand gel. It's really essential, essential to what we are. Food shops being open is essential to us. If we don't have food shops, we can't eat, we can't get through this. Keeping two metres apart is essential so that the COVID-19 uh, bug doesn't actually get passed on. Washing our hands is essential when we come in, when we've touched anything that is, uh, comes into contact with other people. And of course, the subway is essential. The subway is back open now, and I found that really, really essential. So hope is essential. Hope is something that is essential to us as well. Laura and I talked recently about how difficult we found Mondays, and after doing so many things on a Sunday, it's difficult then to come down to that kind of adrenaline uh, purge down into, into Mondays, and we found it a little bit hard to pick ourselves up from that. And huge thanks to everyone who texted us, who WhatsApped us, sent us gifts to help us get through those Mondays. That's absolutely fantastic of you. Thank you so much for that. It gave us so much hope. Thank you. So we're looking at 1 Peter, the first letter Peter wrote to the churches uh, and the main subject of thriving and adversity. We talked about a new living hope in chapter one, about living through that hope and that hope being part of who we are. And then in chapter two, we talked about how we can walk out that hope in our lives. How can we kind of uh, conduct our lives so that we can actually live uh, as though we are hopeful beings. We walk in hope by following in the footsteps of Jesus, setting Jesus as our example, using him as a model to copy and to find out the things that he did that were really, really important to him. So therefore they can be important to us. And it ought to change how you and I live. Our relationship with Jesus ought to change how we relate to others. As a church, we're always analysing how we reach out to, to other people because that's what we're there for, really. We're there to encourage people to come in the doors, to encourage each other, to edify each other, but also to encourage, to reach out to others and to make sure that we're not just like an enclosed uh, set of people. Uh, we want to be better neighbours, we want to be better citizens. Um, and I, I, to, to be honest, I don't know of many churches that do more than us with regard to reaching out to other people, being kind to our friends. Uh, you know, we, we, we're always nagging you to, to look out for the people, to invite them to parties and events that we do, to, to bring them into the, the hope that we have, look after their babies through Grow Baby, give them Easter eggs in Advent calendars in the seasonal times in church, drop them postcards just to check that they're okay when there's a virus going around saying, bring this number if you're in, you're in, you're in need. And we talked uh, about five years ago about uh, 40,000 tandems. You wanted to count all the things that we did in church where we were, we were reaching out to check that we were doing the right thing so 40,000 is the size of Riley 40,000 people and we wanted to time how long it took us to give out 40,000 things with a message of hope about Jesus 40,000 gifts and then with a message out. so a tandem is a random act of kindness and giving out something um, uh, with, with a message about God or about church and about Jesus uh, and about saying that there is someone out there that can help you and we thought it would take us five years. It took us much less than that. It was just over three years, which meant we were doing about an astonishing 1,000 acts of kindness a month. That's about 30 per day on average. And so in a sense, we don't need to nag you about um, you know, what you do because you're very, very good at it. And we're highlighting this today just to bring that home to you. It's important to carry on doing that, carry on blessing other people. So how can I thrive during times of adversity? What's another way we can do that? How, how can we be hopeful through this? The answer is today, reaching out to others, being kind to other people. It's become a well-known fact to us that plagues and viruses and these kind of things, famines that go on, they're nothing new to society. This is not the first time we've been through this kind of pandemic or a dreadful uh, dose of some kind of illness going around or uh, you know, a, a blight on the, uh, the crops, that kind of thing. You know, even in Jesus' day, there was plenty of these kind of plagues and stuff going around at the time. And one of the reasons during that time in the first century, one of the reasons why the church grew so swiftly uh, was because when the plagues hit Jerusalem, where the church was initially based, and it did so periodically, there's quite a few instances that we know of when there were plagues around, the Bible mentions them. When the plagues hit Jerusalem, lots of people moved out to, to run away from it. They went to live with relatives, went to avoid it, they went to get away from it, so they wouldn't die from it. 
this would include lots of pagan priests so there were there was the uh, jewish religion there was christian religions there was also pagan religions in those times they all had their own priests and the pagan priests would just really up and leave they would they would they would just up the sticks and go to another town another city to be able to escape from there but not so the christians Lots of Christians deliberately stayed behind to care for the sick. There was no one, no one in NHS around the time, so they were just they wanted to actually stay and care for the people that were dying. A number of the Christians caught the plague and died, but this didn't deter them from staying around and actually looking after the uh, the people that were sick. And the folk being cared for, the people that had this bug, had this virus, had this plague, they were hugely impressed by the Christians standing behind us. Some of them giving their lives for this. Hence, the church grew. Why wouldn't it? Because you wanted to actually be a part of this. To know what this kindness was they blessed the people around them in a most sacrificial way just like our wonderful nhs you know in uh, this year and all previous years when the nhs has been around since 1948 they give their time they give their energy they give their they're just their their lot some of them have given their lives to us haven't they there have been doctors and nurses and other support staff that have died because of covid19 in hospitals we will be forever grateful to them for that we have people in our own church who are risking their lives so that we can be clear of this this virus going around jesus told his disciples love each other as i have loved you Greater love has no one than this to lay down his one's life for one's friends. And Peter says in the in the text today, he says, "Bless." That's your job to bless. You are blessing. To, you'll be a blessing, and also to get a blessing as well. It's the reason for our hope. It's the reason why we hope is that we bless other people, and then we get blessed because of that. So Peter says, the reason why I'm asking you to do all this is because you're going to get a blessing out of this as well. You'll be blessed because you're blessing other people. The reason why I'm asking you to live in hope and walk in hope is because if you do all that you're going to do, you're going to be blessed. Now remember, these are people he's talking to who are suffering. People are going through a hard time. Not necessarily a lockdown like us, but they are. They were persecuted. They were oppressed. It wasn't a good society to live in. The Romans were very, very uh, harsh in their dealings with the, with the Jews and the Christians. They were scattered all throughout Europe and Asia, throughout the Roman Empire. And when you're suffering, you'll take any blessing you can get, won't you? You'll grab onto that. Maybe you're suffering today. Maybe you know someone who is. Maybe you know someone who's got who's got cabin fever, who's really, really struggling through this. Maybe you um, uh, are you yourself are unemployed. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you know a job. And maybe during this time, um, you know, you, so it's a really difficult time for you. Maybe you're trying to keep your small business afloat. Maybe you're dealing with some kind of sickness or disease. Maybe it may not be COVID, maybe something else. And maybe you're just vulnerable. Suffering is following you around, maybe. It's parked, yourself, it's parked yourself on the street outside. It's trying to get into your home. This is a message of hope for you today. You need to hear this message that even in the midst of suffering, God can and will still give you a blessing. <clears throat> How does he do that? How would I get this blessing? How would I actually, you know, take hold of this to be able to, to receive this? Well, that's the way, the, way I would, the way I would do this. When I, Dave, get blessed, it's connected to how I relate to other people. In other words, there's a connection between my blessing and my behaviour. How I get blessed is how I behave. Let me bring it a little closer to home. God says, if you want my blessing, then you need to bless others. It's a cause and effect. It's one of those things about, you know, what, how you give out is how you receive from God. How you, how you conduct yourself is the way that God will treat you. God says, if you want a blessing in this life, then you ought to live a life of blessing others. This is why Jesus says in the Bible, if you've got two coats, give one of them away. You don't need to give one of those away. Or if you go the extra mile, which is, which is a very famous phrase that we've now adopted in our, in our society. Laura and I, my, my wife Laura and I live by this maxim that when we want to do something that we can't afford, we're thinking, okay, we'd like to actually do that with our family or with our house or with our life. Then what we generally do is we bless someone else. So we give out what we don't have. We give something away, something we've got, and then we donate something to charity or we give out of something that we maybe we don't even have. Uh, and it's remarkable how many times that comes back to us. So we want something, we bless someone else, and God would often give us something uh, in return. It's not always, always, always the way, sometimes we're not listening to God, but generally speaking, when that happens, we like to think that we're, if we bless others, we'll be blessed ourselves. How do I live a life of blessing? You live a life of blessing when you make a decision to live communally rather than individually. 
so live in a community of people rather than as an individual now our, our whole life is geared about individuality about you know looking after number one an englishman's home is his castle all the phrases we use that indicate that but uh, peter says be agreeable be sympathetic be loving be compassionate be humble that goes for all of you all of us how can you be sympathetic and loving and compassionate you can't do that by yourself you have to go out into society to do that to become part of a church part of a group part of the the, the wider society to do that peter here is talking to everybody so it's not just christians it's not just the people in the churches he was talking to he's talking to everybody here he's talking to slaves and masters he's talking to husbands and wives jews and gentiles every race every creed every type parents and teenagers and kids he's not just talking to any community he's talking to the whole church and the whole world if you want to be blessed go out and give something away give it be a blessing to somebody else it's how life functions is how the church should function Peter says it's to everybody in the church. We all need to make a conscious decision to live communally and not individually. This doesn't just apply to them, you know, 1950 years ago. It applies to us now, here in this society, in the Western world. We are steeped in individualism. We have personal computers, we have personal phones, we have personal cars, we have personal emails, Instagrams, TikToks, the whole lot. You know, I've got teenagers in my house. I know how individual life can get. You know, there's a real squirreling away sometimes of, the, of, of, of our lifestyles. We live in a culture that caters to the individual. We're all out for number one. We can work life out ourselves. We can, we, can, we can control life. But Peter says the church is to be a different place, that we ought to be radically different people. I'm just going to bring up here, this is, I'm going to finish with this. This is a, a list of random acts of kindness you can do this week. I'm going to email this out as well to people. So these are some of the things you could do this week to give out to other people, to bless other people instead of just yourself. You can donate some unwanted toys to others. Maybe you've got some kids at home, got an excess of toys. You can give some toys out. Uh, we said, uh, um, and there's another one down that says, leave a box of things by your gate. There's some people around here that have left uh, uh, boxes of uh, books around just outside saying, take one if you want to, or toys. Or maybe someone you know, you can leave on the doorstep. Send a prophetic video message, message to somebody, just an encouraging a video message. You can easily record it on your phone now and send that, maybe just a voice message. It doesn't have to be a video, it should be a voice message. Adopt an animal online. There's loads of places you can go to, zoos, where you can actually pay for an animal to be fed, to be looked after. Send an inspirational book to a friend. Have you read a good book recently? Why don't you go uh, send, send a copy of that to one of your friends? Maybe the copy you've got you want to give away to them, or maybe you want to go on Amazon or somebody else and just actually send that to them. Or knit something, create something for them. There's someone in our church that's been creating uh, uh, hopeful um, uh, key rings for people. Or thank someone different every day for this week. I'm going to finish there, and I'm going to leave you to just peruse on that. We'll be back next week at 10.45. I'm just going to pray now, and then we'll finish. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you've taught us today and everything you want to teach us. Thank you for being with us here. And we pray that you will go with us now as we leave our, our place of worship, as we leave our com computer screens and we go and live our lives, Lord. Be with us all the time as we reach out and bless other people. Thank you for blessing us, Lord, as we bless other people. Thank you for being there for us. Amen. <laughs>